Hi, Mark Warnke here. They call me the goat guy. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to help people to kind of think about what they need to consider before they get goats, right? What, what are the things I need to think about before I get them? So goats, I do need to tell you, are gonna end up being a better pet to you than a dog. There was a study done a while back and, and goats actually have twice the ability to recognize faces, human faces, as a dog does. So there's the intelligence factor, there's the loving factor. Um, you know, I talk a lot about dogs and goats as a comparison, and I think people get the wrong impression. I think they think I'm down on dogs. I'm not down on dogs. I've, I've been a dog lover since I was, you know, a kid. We've always had them. We still have them today. But if you ask me which is a better pet, a goat is actually a better pet than it is. Um, in terms of any energy output and energy input, goats take less energy out than a dog and they have as much or more energy that they put back in. So in my opinion, they're just a better pet, and you may disagree, and that's fine. I'm not turding on dogs, I'm just saying that. If you're looking at having a goat for a pet, that is a part to consider, is that they are just a tremendous, or, or, or having a goat, that they're a tremendous pet. So that's factor number one. So just remember, you're probably gonna love them more than you think. And so you need to include that in the decision-making process. So let's talk the difference between girls and boys. So if you're running Weathers, which is a neutered male goat, you have a tremendous pet. You have an animal that'll pack weight for you, that'll go walking with you, um, and in the end of his life can provide meat for you. He also is an animal, and, and this is another really interesting thing. In modern day society, we have so corrupted how we think about how we get our food that we believe somehow by having an animal that we raise in our pasture that we enjoy during the part of its life while it's growing then we take that life and then we eat it that somehow there are a group of people that would think I'm a bad human for doing that and that's such a ridiculous way to think um, if you're going to be a meat eater things die I would rather have some sort of semblance of relationship with my food as opposed to hiring my rearer, the person who raises my food, and have that person not have the same conscientiousness that I would do and the quality of life of that food. And then let's talk about the quality of, of death to become my food and the hands-on part and having our children see that process. And, you know, there's a lot of people who literally think that, you know, magically delicious meat shows up in the grocery store and, you know, it's in a cellophane wrapper and nothing died to get it there. Um, the reality is hands-on, on your residence, food that you raise and have a relationship with can be and is a beautiful thing. And it's also something that I believe they participate in that process. Um, they were intended to be eaten by something is the reality so what I would say about that is is a thing to consider about a goat and a weather is that at the end of life you're gonna have to decide what that looks like for you and whether you have somebody do that for you whether you donate it to somebody or whether you bury it in a hole in the ground and you consider that you're handing on its energy to worms okay cool I'm not gonna judge you for that this stuff's hard these are upper level parts of life that you need to consider but you got to consider the whole process I believe starting from babies is something that's a really neat thing. You gotta remember if you're starting from babies, um, they need to be bottle fed for about 90 days. That's a, that's a deal. Um, the first month it's three times a day, second month it's two times a day, and the third month it's one time a day. That's a commitment. Once they're kinda on their own, it, the feeding and the caretaking of a goat is actually fairly low maintenance. You can raise them in a very small property. I have 12 goats on an acre and they do awesome. So it isn't really necessary to have a super big property to hold goats. Um, you can raise them on smaller and they live a very happy life. I like to have a little play structure. It's important to have a three-sided shelter. It's important to get to know vet care and maintenance. And, and if you're gonna launch into the world of owning goats, I always say there's one major thing you need to invest in and that's your education. One of the fastest way to get an education on how to raise a goat is to get how, my How to Raise a Baby Goat course in their first year of life you'll learn most of what you need to know and again their maintenance isn't very high 
but to have a vet come out to your farm and do simple things like worming and giving shots, you can easily learn how to do that and I teach you that in the course. So you're gonna need some kind of hands-on vet care. It, it's cool to do it. You're a more knowledgeable human by doing it. I'd encourage you to learn that side of it. Um, but as far as their maintenance, the only ongoing maintenance a goat needs is to be conscientious of parasites. And so you're gonna worm them occasionally. You're gonna vaccinate them once a year and you're gonna trim their hooves about once every 90 days to 60 days. Um, that takes a little bit of strength, not a lot of strength, but you do have to be conscientious that you're gonna need to trim their hooves. They need good fresh water and they need uh, uh, grass hay. A lot of people believe uh, in, uh, incorrectly that are new to the world that you got to give goats grain for their life because they love it and they do but weathers you're actually going to kill them if you do that over time so make sure that you're conscientious of that. Now if we're talking about girls now we're married to two things that you need to consider that's next level so getting a weather getting a boy that's castrated because um, you don't want to buck so I hear all the time, man, don't goats stink? Yes, male goats with testicles pee all over their face. They drink their pee. They're a disgusting animal about six months out of the year. That is not what you want. You don't want to plan to have a, a non-neutered male goat. That's called a buck. Um, you're going to want to neuter them. They are a tremendous pet. They actually, I have both horses and goats on this property. Horses stink like eight times as much as a goat. A goat has little to no odor. Um, a horse, I mean, your clothes, everything pungently smells like horse urine and poo. By comparison to horses, goats are, are literally odorless. Um, and I love both species, that's just the fact. Um, as soon as you get into a girl, now you're married to two things. You're married to a vagina that comes into season like once a month for five months in a row. So you got a goat coming into heat and you also are married to an udder if you're gonna have a baby because she's producing milk and that carries implications. So I'm gonna quickly school you up on what to think about if you're gonna have girls. If you're gonna have girls and you're gonna have weathers around them, then that weather is gonna get all fired up, weather being a neutered male, when she goes into heat, and she's gonna start in either August or September, and she's gonna go into heat consistently, I believe it's every 21 days, I can't believe I don't actually know the number off the top of my head, but it's roughly that, I think it's 22, or anyway. She's gonna come in about once a month, um, till clear to like uh, you know november so you're gonna have heat to deal with and they get pretty frisky and do their thing but he's he's weathered he doesn't have the equipment to successfully breed um but you're gonna still have the implication of that. Um, and it does create problems because they will battle among one another. It's not horrible, but it's something you need to consider. If you then decide to breed, you're gonna to need to find a buck because I highly recommend you do not keep a breeding buck on your property because they stink and they're just not fun to have around that you use somebody else's. If you breed that doe, the breeding process is pretty simple. They know what they're doing. You drop that doe off, he, she gets bred, she comes back five months later, you're gonna have babies. With the implication of that, goats are good mothers as a general rule. The meat species, boers, not so much. Uh, they are just kind of a dumber goat. Um, lots of times they need help with the birthing process. A lot of the dairy goats are better at it, but still, um, this year out of eight goats or eight does that had babies on my property this year I had to go in and get one out of her birth canal six out of eight times um, but that we had six sets of triplets and when you have triplets they can cause implications and and this year especially it just seemed like everybody struggled all my previous years I never really had to go in and rearrange kids but if you're going to have babies on your property, number one is you got to remember uh, the vet will not come out to your house at two o'clock in the morning to help you to save that doe and that baby. You're on your own. I have a course on how to help a goat have a baby, and the course will show you how to how to you know pull babies. It'll show you how to know when they're gonna have their babies. The whole process, everything that has to do with birthing. Then we go on to milk because now you've successfully helped that goat to have a baby, but now you got an udder to contend with. And you got to remember, if you have a good, well-bred dairy goat, she's going to produce a lot of milk. So you're, you're going to need to know how to milk that goat, how to take care of that udder, and how to take care of that goat while she's producing milk, because her energy reserves are a lot. 
And on top of it, you're gonna have to know how to dry her up if you wanna get out of the game. And drying up a high production dairy goat is not as simple as it seems. You don't just kinda of quit cold turkey and hope thing goes right. There's a process of weaning and, and all that sort of thing. So I'm certainly not trying to say any of this is highly difficult, but you will educate yourself. Uh, and by the way, if you wanna go into the milking game, I also have a course on how to help you um, to learn how to be a good milker and to learn how to be a good steward of that dough and that udder and the process and birthing and weaning and, and all that stuff that goes into it, how to use milking machines, how to hand milk. Um, one of the most beautiful things I ever did was when I finally started having babies and milking. I highly recommend it. But again, I'm trying to tell you kind of some of the things to think about before you decide to kind of jump off onto that platform, what's gonna be happening for you. So I think that's a pretty good overview um, of some of the highlights of what to think about in owning goats. Um, remember, goats make a tremendous companion even just to walk them on the trail. They'll walk with you as well or, or better than a dog. They can pack your goods into the gear. I mean, that's what I'm known for is packgoats.com. That's my URL. And I help people to know that whole process as well and have a course on packing goats. Then we have milk, then we have meat, and then we just have pets. Uh, all those are wonderful benefits to having goats. Um, and I can't recommend them more as a critter that you should have on your small acreage. They're just a tremendous animal. So I hope that helps you to decide kind of what you might think about before you get into goats. And uh, I hope you found that helpful. Mark Warnke, the goat guy. Oh, my God.